Hey guys, this is day two effectively on the flap work that I'm working on the background. I'm working on the left flap. I've got the frame of the left and right together at this point, uh, but I've stopped working on the right one. I'm going to the left one. I'm going to finish it out and then I'm going to jump back over on the right one. Mostly I got the frames all done, all the skeleton uh, put together. And uh, once I had all the parts and pieces exactly where I knew the mirror was correct, I stopped working on the right, put it aside and then started working just on the left. And that's what's going on back here. This is a little late coming to you. I meant to get this to you last Sunday. Unfortunately, life just jumped up and got in the way. So sorry about that. Anyways, onward. So I talked about previously in one of my former videos, which I'll put a link to it way up here, about a mistake I made when I was making this trailing edge and that I had actually imparted a bow in the edge due to my table not being perfectly flat. I won't do that again now that I know that's a problem. I've had a couple of people ask me about what this table is and it's just a eight by four piece of plywood. I've got a two, a two foot extension on one end and I thought I built it fairly robust, but unfortunately I just, I need to add it more. So I, I, I think you can never be too sturdy. Uh, I talked to one guy, he said he built his tabletop out of solid steel, which I, he said it was an inch thick of steel on top of it, which I have to think that's gotta weigh a freaking ton. But anyways, um, getting that trailing edge super straight, you can see right here how straight that is, exactly what we want, that's perfect. But what's important is how you drill that trailing edge. So you've got this piece that comes to a point on one and is wide on the other here. This is what goes between the two skins. The two skins come to it like that. Well, if, you, if you're coming at it and drilling your hole from the skin, it would be real easy to drill at it from this angle. The problem with that is, is you're gonna drill through the the other skin incorrectly. So when you drill, you have to make sure you drill perpendicular to the center line of this part. That's important, otherwise you're gonna screw this up. And so you can see here, this is what I'm showing. You, you don't wanna drill it like this, you wanna drill it like that. That's the correct way to do it. And I drilled the whole thing through that way. So just be real cognizant of that is when you're drilling your trailing edges, you wanna keep those straight, you wanna keep them clean, and you wanna make sure you don't booger up the bottom skin or what, whatever skin is the opposite of where you're drilling through. If you're not careful, you will. You know, it's times like this, I really wish I had a, a lighter drill and a, a pneumatic Clico puller. Uh, there's a lot of Clicos on these and when you're just going back and forth and, and, you know, and putting them all in and then you gotta move them over to the next hole after you go through and drill them all, your hands just, you just kind of get to muscle failure. You get to a point where your grip strength is just not there anymore. And this drill is really light, by the way. Uh, I've tried bigger drills. My pneumatic drill, uh, my, you know, my air drill is actually heavier than this thing. This thing doesn't weigh anything, but still, I've, after a while, it just wears on you. Drill bits. Drill bits are a lot like sandpaper. I have seen people use sandpaper to where it's no longer sandpaper. It's just paper. Um, sandpaper is meant to be used up and thrown away, right? I can't tell you. Like I said, I've seen people use like 120 grit paper until it's basically 600 grit because it's just paper at that point. Don't do that. Same thing with drill bits. Drill bits get dull. Um, they get dull fairly quickly. Now this is soft aluminum that you're going to be doing most of this on, but they still get dull. And they, they're cheap, three, four bucks for a number 30, number 40. These longer ones, uh, they're a little more expensive and you will use the crap out of them. Get several, right? I would say at least a set of 30, 40s for each kit, maybe two or three sets. You know, like I said, Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you go to get your stuff like that, aircraft, spruce, they're, they're inexpensive. Get several of them. Don't try to use a dull drill bit, you're just, you're gonna wanna shoot yourself in the foot. Um, and if using a dull drill bit or using sandpaper that is just paper, uh, if it's not effective, then all you're doing is adding a bunch of extra time. And that little bit of time over the course of years adds up. Get good drill bits, get new ones often. Washer wrenches. One of the things that can be really frustrating is when you're trying to insert a washer into a really tight place and you got big fat fingers like I do, or even normal sized fingers, and you just can't get your fingers in there. Well, they make a set of super thin, springy, just 
I guess it's just pressed aluminum is all it really is, but it's they're wrenches. They're designed to put a washer in this little cut area and there's a bunch of different sizes based on the possible washer. And then you can use that to slip that down in between the difficult to reach place to get the wa to get the washer where it needs to go. Now I've heard tell some people that just use tape where they put a piece of tape uh, on the washer and they just kind of drop it in down and then you know put the thing through and pull the tape off which is handy except what if you need to go from the bottom up? Well you know then you're pushing rope right? It's very difficult so these are really handy they're very inexpensive and I, I think getting a set of them is worth it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is machine countersinking the trailing edge. So these uh, these trailing edge pieces are pretty cool, but uh, you got to be careful when you work at them. I showed you already that when you drill them, you got to kind of drill perpendicular to the uh, the holes uh, and to the edge itself. Uh, otherwise, you're going to drill kind of a funky. Um, you're, you're going to drill a funky uh, angle, which is not good. That, that, that would be bad because it'd poke a hole in the skin. Um, but you don't do that. So, so to reiterate, you're drilling perpendicular, not to the edge or not to the flat part, but actually to the cord line of this device or to this, this piece. Whereas when you're machine countersinking it, no, you're actually machine countersinking it flush with this device. And to that end, I've got this plate, which really helps with that. Uh, I, I bought this online, I don't know where, um, but it's been really handy and allows me to put this, uh, this edge in here and slide it along and line up these little holes with the big holes that are in this device to do a better machine countersink and it allows it basically keeps the whole thing flat and allows me to machine countersink all right here which is awesome the next thing i wanted to mention is you want to make sure you have your your countersink cutter set to cut ever so slightly deeper than just for a rivet because this is actually going to be under the skin, and so you want to have the skin sit down in there nicely, and then a rivet goes in that. And you're doing both sides, so you don't want to overcut, but you don't want to undercut either, because if you undercut, then your skin's going to kind of bow up a little bit on top of it. So you want to make sure your cutter is, I mean, just give it an extra mouse hair turn. I mean, just a couple, a couple of the crowns is all, just to get that little extra depth. And uh, I find that works out pretty well. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. I'm disassembling the flap in the background there. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, thank you so very much for being patient. Like I said at the very start of this, I had, I had meant to put this video out last week for last Sunday and just life got in the way. Eh, what do you do, right? If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor and click that thumbs up button down there and subscribe. And if you want to get weekly notifications of when I release these, hit the bell button. I'm not sure why that's a thing. And if you really want to support this channel, let me know you like what I'm doing. If you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support me and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Just think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. And by the way, you absolutely can build one of these planes. Vans has a whole bunch of different really cool products. And, and don't, by the way, don't just look at Vans, but if you do decide to buy a Vans aircraft, if, if and when you submit your purchase, your first purchase for your empanage or something like that, if you use my builder number, which is in the comments down below, Vans will send me a hundred bucks. You can do it. Again, it doesn't have to be a Vans aircraft. Look at all the other really cool options. Sling makes a good product. Van makes a good product. Uh, there's a ton of them. Do it. Build it. It's, this is such a great process. It takes a long time. And, and yes, it is expensive, but it's infinitely cheaper than just going out and buying a plane. And in the end, you got a really cool product. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks.